Welcome to another Lord's Day, another worship experience. And as we worship God together, today we pray for a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Pray that the Lord will visit each of us in new and creative ways. And that through this worship experience, all of us will be closer drawn to him. Let us pray. Father, we give you thanks. Lord, we give you praise. We give honor and glory. And we give praise to you, O God. You are sovereign. You are holy. Lord, you can always be trusted. And so, Lord, today as we stand in your presence and in your house, we pray that spirit of the living God, you will fall afresh upon us. We ask that, Lord, you will curfew this place by your Holy Spirit. May none of us leave here untouched or unmoved. We pray that, Lord, through the proclamation of your word, through singing and clapping and expressions of praise, that you'll be glorified. Pray for each worshiper that will enter through these doors. Lord, help none of us to live the same way we came. Pray, Lord, for those who will sing and read and pray and those who will give and those who will play instruments. Lord, those who will offer other technical and critical support in order that this service may be transmitted elsewhere. Pray that, Lord, you will just grant them a special enabling. Pray for your woman servant as she stands to proclaim your word. May you grant her boldness and clarity. Lord, we pray that as the word is proclaimed in the service of worship today, that hearts will be blessed, that souls will come to know you, whom to know is life and peace. So, Lord, once again we say, come, Holy Spirit, we need thee. Hallelujah. O oh, come, sweet spirit, we pray. Come in thy strength and thy power. O oh, come in thine own gentle lead and direct, O oh God, we pray. In the name of Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And together we see. Amen. Shall we worship the Lord, everybody? Shall we worship the Lord? Praise the Lord. Shall we worship the Lord? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can we all stand, please? There is a sweet anointing in the sanctuary. There is a Burdens you have carried for it. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we adore you this morning. We lift you up this morning. Kings of kings and lords of lords. The conquering lion in the tribe of Judah. Our healer, our provider, our strong tower, our house of defense. God, we give you glory this morning. For there is no one else like you. No one else can touch our hearts like you do. No one else can heal us. No one else can provide for us. No one else can wake us up at morning. No one else, God, but you this morning. And so we adore your matchless name. We give you honor this morning, God. God. We lay our lives before you this morning, for you are the I am that I am. Oh God, you are the great God. You are the mighty warrior. You are strong and mighty in battle. Ah, God, all of the gods, they are the works of men, but you are the most high God. And because you are the most high God this morning, we just want to adore you. We just want to send our praises up to you. We just want to give you thanks this morning. We just want to love you, Lord, with all our hearts. Oh, God, we just want to give you all the glory because you deserve all the glory. Father, as we come before your presence this morning, our God, nothing good have we done. But today we are at your mercy seat. We're asking for forgiveness of all the sins that we have committed. Oh God, the wrong places that we have been to. The wrong clothes that we wear. God, the wrong things that we have said. God, so many things that we have done that is not right in your sight. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you were wounded for our transgressions and you were bruised for our iniquities. And because of the chastisement of our peace uh, was upon you, O oh God, we are healed from sin today. God, we are asking God that you saturate us now in your anointing, God Almighty, and that you'll break every yoke. You'll wash us thoroughly, God, from our iniquities uh, and cleanse us from every sin. Father, we just want to thank you this morning for this wonderful day that you have made. God, you said we should rejoice and be glad in it. And because you have made us glad this morning, we are here rejoicing and to give you thanks and to give you praise uh, for life and life more abundantly. We want to thank you for your patience, God. Oh, God, even when we are in a mess, uh, God, you never gave up on us. Uh, oh, God, even when we fail you, God, you never gave up on us. Uh, we just want to thank you this morning. Oh, God, for food, uh, for clothing, for shelter. We want to thank you, God, for your love. Oh, God, when we couldn't even love ourselves, uh, when no one else loved us, God. Oh, uh, God, you came down from heaven uh, and you show your great love towards us. Uh, God, we thank you for everything. We thank you for everyone. We thank you, God, for the anointing that will break the yoke this morning. We thank you, Lord, for all things uh, are bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. We thank you, oh God. We thank you, Jesus. Uh, we thank you, Almighty God. We thank you, Holy Ghost. Uh, we thank you, hallelujah. We thank you, mighty God. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. sweet, sweet spirit in this place, and I know it is the spirit of the Lord. Yeah. 
from Psalm 51, reading from verse 1 to 10. We'll read alternately. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner, when my mother conceived me. Purge me with essop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and a righteous spirit within me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever, world without end.
to 52 Main Street, which is the location of the Anotobe Baptist Church. Welcome to everyone in the sanctuary and to those who are with us in cyberspace. If it's your first time worshiping with us, we extend it to you that very warm Anotobe welcome. And we pray that as we worship, we will all be taken to another place in him and experience him afresh. Um, Shanique Reed is here with us. I understand that Shanique is not here for the very first time, but she has not been here for a little while, so we welcome Shanique in our midst this morning. A 
A very special welcome to our preacher for today, Deacon Pauline Phillips. And I see a lady down there, if I'm not mistaken, is her mom? Yes, and her mother is here with us as well. They are from the church in Arroka, Grace Baptist in Arroka Bessa. Deacon Phil Phillips is no stranger to us. We thank God that she has answered his call and is here to share with us what he has laid on our heart for his people at such a time as this. As she delivers, let us listen with attentive ears and open hearts. Birthdays, based on our records, our celebrants for this week are Nurse Taylor on the 13th, and I have here one Donna Hansen Hume, Hume, one of our online participants. She is also, she will also celebrate on September 13th. On the 14th, we have Brother Tyrone Morrison. On the 12th, which is tomorrow, we have Sister Mishka and the brother Tyrese Edwards. And on the 17th, we have Sister Lisa Reynolds. We pray that God may, ans may answer all your wishes and fill your life with love, joy, and happiness. And we wish for you the happiest birthday when it comes. To those in virtual space who will celebrate during this week, these wishes are also extended or seek on the homebound, let's continue to pray, call, visit, find out if you can be of any assistance in any way. Sister Heather, I'm told, is home, so please remember that you can pay her a visit. The funeral service for Deacon Suzette Goss's husband will be held on Saturday, September 17th, at the Clonmel Baptist Church. Let us try to go and support our sister and her family. And remember to keep them in our prayers as they go through this difficult period. Mission Month, remember, we are in Mission Month. And each Wednesday, we are invited to join a virtual Bible study at 7 p.m. The theme, Embracing the Mystery, God's Mission Field. Last Wednesday was very interesting, Jesus on the farm. This week, September 14th, will be Jesus on the seaside. You can't afford to miss it. It's via Zoom, YouTube, and Facebook, and so I think the link we got from last week is the same link that we can use for this week. We got it last week. The AGM, which is that the annual general meeting of members of this church will be held on Sunday, September 18th at 5 p.m. sharp. Please come out in your numbers so that you can be a part of the planning and the decision making for the new church year, which starts in October. Members of the 200th anniversary committee, please remember we meet at 5 p.m. this afternoon for a very important meeting. Members, you are being encouraged to purchase your commemorative lapel pins. Cost of the pins, $2,000. Buy your pins and help to promote the 200th anniversary celebration. Sunday school teachers, the new registers for September are ready. Please remember to collect yours. Have a blessed day in the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Truly, it is a privilege to be alive and a privilege to be in God's house one more time. Amen. We are so grateful that the Lord has afforded us another opportunity and we do not take it 
for granted. Today we are so happy to see those of us who are here. And those who are not here today, we trust that they are keeping well. I, I figure when I didn't see Sister Harrison yesterday and don't see her today, that perhaps she's not doing so very well. There are some members that when you don't see them sometimes, you know, it's them usual habit to come to church sometime. But there are some persons when you don't see them in church, you know that it is, it is unusual. So we bear her up unless she's gone to the beach. Uh, she's gone a little excursion. But we trust that she's doing well. They can break for left us on Thursday and Friday. So I think almost half of the church overseas now. So anybody else planning to leave, you can leave until people start coming back. But she'll be away for some time. And we trust and pray that the Lord will bring her back to us. Back to us safely. Yesterday, Sister Moore buried her husband. And those of us who are here to support them on behalf of the family, they've asked to say thanks to you for your prayers and for your support. This is what I really came up here to say, and I almost forgot that the treasurer put a note in the group on Friday. Anybody saw it? If you're not in the family group, ensure they go to the office and get in the family group before the end of this week. Uh, I am not going to belabor the point, but I'm going to endorse it. I made the same point last week. And last week I said you were 95. What, what percentage I gave last week? 90. 90? 95. We're about 98% complete. And those of us who have not yet gone to see the, the project, <laughs> uh, I encourage you to go and see the project before you leave today. And as I've been promising those online that I, we're going to create an opportunity for you to also see the project because it will inspire you to give. Amen? So we're asking those who have already given, which is all of us, right? To make a sacrifice and to give again. And those who have not yet given, that you are still able to give. Some time ago, we embarked on building what we call new and modern restrooms for the church and we are 98 what was I saying? 98 percent complete so it is usable but it is not completed and already members overseas at least one member has reached out to say that throughout the course of this week she will contribute and I want to tell you that I hope we'll get more than enough that we can complete the project and start another project. Thank you, Sister Maki. Sister Maki, say amen. So those of us who have not yet gone to see the project, we encourage you just to go around the back, ask somebody to direct you, and look at the project because it will encourage and inspire us to give. We want to thank as the treasurer said on Friday, all our members who sacrificially have given. And the truth is that all we, we have done exceptionally well. Amen? Put your hands together for yourself. Clap on yourself, man. We have done exceptionally well. And as I said last week, they will help us to, to help to take us in the direction we are going as a church. A member came to me one day in the office 
and she lamented the fact that she's not well. And I call her name because she's in church today. And she said, boy, she has to go stop coming to church because she need proper bathrooms. Amen? And it, it bothered me. So we have to work very hard because I don't want to lose that, that precious, I don't want her to become a shut in before time. Right, Sister McKay? <laughs> Sisters and brothers, it is that time in our service when we'll worship God with the giving of our monetary gifts. And I'll say two things. One is that next week, we'll collect a special walk-up offering towards our zone crusade. And this will be held on the grounds of the Monique Baptist Church. St. Catherine, St. Anne, and St. Mary will come together for a week two weeks uh, to host an evangelistic campaign and throughout the course of this week into Sunday we will hear which nights or which night we will go it will be good if all of us can charter these three buses sister face say amen and go down to Monique amen to support the evangelistic campaign. And as I said, over and over, soul winning is the primary business of the church. So we are going to Monique. So we ask all of us to prepare ourselves, musicians, praise team, everybody we're going down to Monique one night or several nights uh, to share in our zone crusade. We ask those of us who are able to give, uh, to give. And we also ask those of us who are able to share the link and watch online. So to do that this Zone Crusade will be a tremendous success. And that it will reap much fruit uh, for the kingdom of God. Today, if you are online, giving options are available to you. We ask that you utilize any that best suits your convenience. And if you're in the sanctuary, an usher will direct you. And as you come today, surrender your gift to God. Give him all the glory and all the honor as we continue to make him first place in our lives.
Father, we thank you. We bless your name that you are our Jehovah Jireh. Lord, you are our faithful provider. And we just glorify you. You have always provided. Lord, we believe by faith that you will always provide. So, Lord, as we have surrendered our gifts to you today, we ask that, Lord, you'll accept it and use it, O oh God, multiply it, that our store baskets will never be empty, that, Lord, there's, there'll always be bread enough to eat and to spare. Lord, many gave today sacrificially, out of little or nothing, but Lord, your word tells us to cast our bread upon the waters and after many days we shall find it. Lord, may they recognize or may they experience that you are the supplier of needs. We pray that Lord, every bill represented in this house, this service, online today will be paid every need will be met almighty god and ultimately you will be glorified so lord we ask that you will rebuke the devourer and we ask that lord even now you'll open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that we will not have room enough to receive glorify yourself among us be thou exalted, be thou praised. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And together we say, Amen. Be seated in the presence of the Lord. Just to say to us that I spoke to Sister Marriott in the week. And she said that she's back. She's not in church today. We thank God the Lord has brought her back to us safely and that today brother Anard will, is gone off to Junapen and brother Navarro is gone to Clonmel. So we thank God that we have enough people that we can send out people. Amen. I hope Allah will help us to send out more people that people will hear and come to know Christ whom to know his life and peace. My brother around the back I want to welcome you. I should have known your name but I welcome you to the third Sunday. Amen. If you come to this church three consecutive Sundays, you can't stop coming. So we give a special welcome. Mr. White, put your hands together for him. Amen. Praise the welcome our worship team that will lead us in worship. Shall we bless the Lord, everybody? Did anybody come to worship him this morning? Did anybody come to worship him this morning? Can we just stand in the presence of the Lord as we lift those hands and as we magnify him for he is worthy. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Can we just take a, a 30 seconds with our hands raised and let's begin to worship him for he deserves our worship. Hallelujah. Can somebody just exalt the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah? Can we just lift those hands and worship him? For he's a good God. He's a good God. He's a good God. He's a merciful God. Hallelujah. We worship you. He's a holy God. He's a righteous God. And so we exalt you this morning. We glorify you this morning. Can somebody just lift those hands? And take a 30 seconds and bless him. Bless him for he is good. For he is the king of kings. He is the lord of lords. We bless him this morning. Hallelujah. We 
bless you, God. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you. Just another 30 seconds. Hallelujah. We bless you. We bless you, God. We bless you, Lord. This is your house. Father, come and dwell. This is your house, a holy house of prayer, where the lost bring their burdens and their cares. This is your house. This is your house. So come. This is your house, and I'll say, This is your house. Father, come and dwell. Father, come. Help me 
to sing, I prevail. Lift your hands and say, I prevail. I prevail. I prevail. I prevail. Sickness 
just worship us again and say, I prevail. Say, I. I prevail. I prevail. Somebody lift your voices at Jesus' prayer. I prevail, I prevail this morning. Whatever the circumstances are, I prevail, I prevail. Oh, hallelujah. We give you praise, Jesus. We give you praise. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, we glorify you this morning. I prevail. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just touch yourself. Just just prophesy for yourself, say, I prevail. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. God. Yes, God. Somebody just lift their hand and say, Death, death could not hold you. Down. Somebody prophesied the atmosphere and say, You are the risen king. You are the risen king. Let the seed in it, man. Just see this morning. Yeah. See that in majesty. You are the risen king. You are the
So who can stand against our King? No one can. No one will. Oh God. Who can stand against our King? No one can. No one will. Worship us, will you help us say, oh. Somebody say, to say right there is a victory belongs to you. That's right, victory belongs to you. Everybody say, victory belongs to you. Victory belongs oh, oh, to you. Somebody declare, victory belongs. Victory belongs. Victory belongs to you. Oh, 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Anybody believe that is our strength this morning? <sighs> Dr. Juanita Bynum put pen and paper to, to and she began to wrote and she said, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on the Lord. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on the Lord. Anybody, anybody willing to wait on God this morning until your change come? Anybody willing to wait? Job was sick for so long, and Job said he will wait. Anybody will wait on God this morning? Can you just lift up your hand and say, God comes what me. I'm going to wait and I'm going to trust you. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. On the Lord. On the Lord. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind was sick so long still his flesh fell from his bone he has sore from the crown of his head troops in no matter how long it take I will surely wait somebody lift up your hand and say teach me Lord Teach me, Lord, how to wait for they that wait upon the Lord shall renew. Wait. 
upon the Lord, upon the Lord shall renew. If you're sitting, I want you to lift your hands. I want you to lift your hands. If you're standing, lift your hands. Just a second. Just a 30 second. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I, I, I move on to other songs, but I'm hearing the one song in my spirit. I prevail. Can we just lift your hands and just declare, I prevail. Wherever you're sitting, if you're standing, just lift your hand and just declare, I prevail. Can we sing the chorus one time? I prevail, everybody together. I prevail. I prevail. I prevail. I prevail. Sing, I prevail. I prevail. Yes. I prevail, I prevail. Yes, I, yes, I say, yes, I, yes, I, I prevail. Those of you who are sitting, can you just lift your hand and say, yes, I, yes, I, I prevail. I prevail. Yes, I, yes, I. I'm handing over the mind, but can I tell you something? There's gonna come a time that we can't lift our hands. There's gonna come a time that we can't open our mouths. But while we have the opportunity to do it, can we just raise our hands towards heaven? Can we just raise both hands towards him and I say, God, I prevail. I know some of us, I know some of us are not so, not so encouraged this morning. Some of us are very discouraged, some of us are feeling very low. But if you just use the opportunity for 30 seconds, and just declare, I prevail, everybody say, I prevail, say. I prevail. I prevail. I prevail. Scribes, 
murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost, until he find it? And when he had found it, he laid it on his shoulder, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he called together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repented more than over 99 just persons which need no repentance. Either what woman having 10 pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. And when she had found it, she called for her friends and her neighbors together saying, rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repented. Here ended a portion of God's holy word. Sisters and brothers, before I introduce our speaker for today, I thought about it this morning, should have said it earlier, but I was reminded as I sat during the worship that we want to congratulate all our members who were successful in their CSEC examination. I heard that Kyla sat nine, seven, she got six. And we thank God for Kyla. I remember when Kyla started coming to church here, she was still in primary school and she finished Titchfield. And she have evidence that she learned something. Amen. And she can't stay up a yard, Sister Jai. Amen? So, you have to march her somewhere, whether left, right, or center. But she has to go somewhere. And we pray that as she grows academically, she'll also grow spiritually. There may be others that I am not mindful of. But there are some persons, and Sister Primos, I couldn't forget you this morning. That, you know, I thought about it. That some two years ago, I had a crazy idea to start an empowerment institute. And like every other idea, it come up against some kind of tugging. Amen. But I hear the songwriter say, forward still. Amen. And we are so grateful that the Empowerment Institute has survived and it has produced. Amen? And uh, Sister Primrose had two subjects and she got grade two in both of them. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, I say, boy, to God be all the glory. Amen? Brother Tamale Francis He's not in church today, but he also sat English, and he was successful. I had Brony Phipps sat two, two, and she got one. She got the English, and I don't have all the, the information, but we thank God for those who sacrificially commit their time, their effort, uh, from all indication, only one student was not successful in the English class. And Brother Anar taught the English. And only one was not successful in the POB. And Sister Cornel Bell also taught the POB. 
they were online for the duration. And I think some evening the POB class met in person. And, but despite all of the many challenges brought on by the pandemic, we are so grateful. And we know that it is only a phase as they continue to build themselves and continue to maximize their potential. So we'll hear of the many, many other details, especially in our members' meeting next week, next week Sunday evening. And we thank God for those who uh, continue to work in these initiatives. And we thank God for the many fruit. Right, Brother Jason? Amen. He's a past student that it has produced. And we, are, we ask those who are able to teach, those who can contribute, that initiatives like these will continue. Amen? Our preacher today is Deacon Pauline Phillips. And I love to hear her. Amen? Every time she comes here to preach, I later to go to my next church. <laughs> I love to hear her. Amen? An anointed and very solid servant of the Lord. She is a faithful member of our church. The Grace Baptist Church in Arakabessa, where she served as church treasurer. And her pastor tell me that she is one of his best lay preachers. I mean, I'm going to take her away. Come up here. Amen. But every now and again, we have to borrow her to come up here. Amen. And we are so grateful, Sister Phillips, that you have availed yourself, or you are availing yourself to be used by God in the service of worship today. And our only prayer is that God will anoint you afresh as of other times. And that the Lord will use you today to encourage the hearts of God's people, to challenge the hearts of God's people, and to glorify God's name. Sister Phillips, mother is here with her today. She's also Phillips. No, she's a Campbell. And she also is a long-standing and dedicated member of the Grace Baptist Church in Arakabes, and we thank God for them. Amen? Put your hands together for them. They have journeyed all the way from Arakabes this morning. God has granted them journeying mercies. And as she proclaimed God's word, we pray that the spirit of the living God will fall afresh upon her. Before she comes, we receive a ministry in music, after which we'll receive God's servant, in the person of her sister, Deacon Pauline Phillips. And when she comes, receive her. Amen. And pray for her as she delivers God's word. He's a, he's a way maker. Anybody know that he's a way maker? Anybody know that he's a way maker? Amen. Come on, lift your hand and say, way maker. Oh. Don't know how. Can we just prophesy? Say, no. Don't know how. But you did it. Can somebody just lift your hand and say, don't know how, don't know how, but you did it. Don't know how, don't know how, yes. Don't know how, but you did it. Standing here, say, standing here, not knowing how. Not knowing how we'll get through this test. Holding on to faith, but holding If we can't win, when it looks as if we can't win, you wrap us in your arms and step in, wrap us in your arms and step in. You say we need everything we need, you supply. Was a 
forget when I back was against the wall. And it looks as if it all And it looked as if it was over.
just give God a praise this morning. Yeah. Hallelujah. Give God some praise yeah. in this place this morning. He's working for you this morning. Working for and me. he's working for me. Hallelujah. Working Glory to me. your name, God. We exalt you in this working place. For me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a wonderful time of worship. Um, Rev, we could pronounce a benediction. All the sermon have already been summed up in all the songs. We could almost go home. We are grateful to God for the Spirit of God. I greet you well. I greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus. I greet those who are worshiping with us in virtual space. It is an honor to be able to be alive and to stand to pronounce God's words this morning. Nothing good about Pauline Phillips. Everything good about Almighty God. Hallelujah. So we give him praise this morning and honor. We take nothing for granted when we get the opportunity to come into his house. Hallelujah. To worship him. Oh, many in the hospital this morning would want to be here. You just check one of those morgues this morning. Don't want to be here. Switch places. And it's not because we have done anything good why we are here and they are not. Just God's grace and God's mercies. Hallelujah. We give him praise this morning and thanks. I just want us to look for a few moments. I turn your Bibles to the book of Joshua. It's a well-known uh, book and well-known passage, Joshua chapter 3. And just reading a few verses from verse 9, Joshua 3. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, Come hither and hear the words of the Lord your God. And Joshua said, Hereby ye shall know that the living God is among you, and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites, the Hittites, and the Ivites. Hivites and the Perizzites and the Jerizzites and the Amorites and the Jebusites. Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth passeth over before you into Jordan. Now, therefore, take you twelve men out of the tribes of Israel, out of every tribe a man, and it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord. The Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand upon a heap. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will refer to other verses in the chapter, but it's a well-known chapter. So we don't have to read all of it this morning. I just want to use for a little theme this morning. Going over with God. Going over with God. No retreat, no surrender. Going over with God. I don't know what you need to go over, but you need to go over with God. Going over with God. No retreat. No surrender. Hallelujah. We go to God in prayer. Father, we come to you this morning. We wait upon you, Lord. Hallelujah. We pray, God, that you will speak to us this morning through your words. We thank you, God, for the privilege to come into your house. And even now, we back back every force of darkness, every spirit of destruction, everything that would seek to exalt itself above your will. We bind it up now in the name of Jesus Christ. And we pray, God, that you will speak to us. We pray, God, that you will encourage us. You will save somebody, deliver somebody, heal somebody through your words this morning. Hallelujah. For who can stand before you? No one can. Hallelujah. For God, you are the way maker this morning. So we wait upon you, Lord, even now. And we tell you thanks in the mouth of Jesus Christ. Let the church say, 
Amen. Hallelujah. Going over with God. No retreat. No surrender. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, the book of Joshua is a book that tells the story of God miraculously reclaiming a part of the earth for his chosen people as he had promised. It is also a book showing how God rescues his people. Are you with me, church? God does not break promise. He made promise to his children years before. And now they were at the bank of Jordan. And God was about to carry through with his promise. Talk to me, church. God is still interested in rescuing people. Church, God is still interested in rescuing people today. It don't matter where you are. Hallelujah. It's a book that shows us that regardless of the obstacles that you may face, whether they be Jericho walls, whether they be giants in your promised land, hallelujah, whether there be raging waters to cross, God is faithful, God is capable, God is powerful enough to deliver. And with God, nothing is impossible. It doesn't matter how long it takes. Hallelujah. It's going to come through. So the well-known passage presents a very important milestone in the lives of the Israelites. And can I hurry to say that it's not only for them, but it was for the generations to come after. To know that their forefathers serve a God who comes true. They serve a God who victory belongs to. Victory does not belong to the four parents or the leaders. But victory belongs to God. Hallelujah. God's plan was to take them out of slavery into freedom. Mm. Take them out of Egypt where they had no identity. And take them into the promised land where they would have identity. God's plan was to rescue. And God's plan today is to rescue somebody. Hallelujah. Here were a people who had traveled for 40 long years. They had lost some folks along the way. I hear Rev. Saini has lost some members to migration. We too, Rev, all of us mourning. The journey may be long. Lose some folks along the way, we lose some to death. These people had fought many, many battles. And now they were near to their destination. They had sent over spies. And according to Joshua 2 verse 24, two of the spies returned and said, The Lord has handed over the entire land to us. And everyone who lives in the land are afraid of us. Oh Lord, some spies might say giants over there. But these spies came and said the people are afraid of us. Not because of the Israelites, but because of the God who worried them. Can I talk to us that sometimes we are afraid of some people are afraid of us? Oy, oy, oy. Sometimes we are afraid of some people, and the people them afraid of you because not because of you, but they know that you walk with power. Yeah. Hallelujah! So sometimes you just need to straighten up your shoulder and step out with your God. Hallelujah! For He has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. So the report came back. The report was good from those two spies. Joshua and the people, the other leaders, must have become excited for they heard good news this time. Talk to me, no man. Talk to me, because sometimes we'll just long to hear a, a good news, some, some news of hope. Amidst all the bad news and the bad experiences that we encounter in our life's journey, it is refreshing to get a little good news. So Joshua and the people got excited. Can I talk to us? Joshua gave instructions to the people. 
move forward and pitch your tents on the banks of River Jordan. Oy, oy, oy. As the people camped on the east side of Jordan with great anxiety and great anticipation and excitement, there was one obstacle. River Jordan. One obstacle was there. I don't know what Jordan is separating you from God's promise for you this morning. Oh, but we serve our God. Hallelujah. Who is more powerful than any Jordan. We serve a God who never fail. Hallelujah. So Joshua and the people were at the bank of the river for three days. Three days they were there. Three days, maybe three months for some of us. Three years or even 30 years. But stay on the bank. Stay on your bank. Don't turn back. Hallelujah, no retreat. Stay at your bank because you're going over. Hallelujah. So my brothers and sisters, they, they were there, but the river was raging. A raging river which seemed uncrossable. The river was in spay. Oh, if any of you ever see Ochum River down in Port Maria, when it's in spay, full flood status. Some writers explain that the, the current of the Jordan River Rev could be about 40 miles per hour. So it did not go on with things. And the depth what could go as much as 12 feet. Can I talk to us? A big river that going on. Raging river. Oh, but my brothers and sisters, God told them to go there. So they had to follow God's instructions. Sometimes when God gives us instructions and the things may seem so impossible and frightening to you, it better you lock your eye but still hold on to God's promise. Close your eye for we walk not by sight but by faith. Talk to me church. The people must have gotten frightened. This river in Spain must have been frightening. Might have been heartbreaking. Might have been faith shaking. For sometimes you come upon some river and they shake your feet. I don't care if you are deacon, intercessor, choir leader. Some things in life will shake your feet. Oh, my brothers and sisters. But stay on the bank, don't move, regardless of the raging river. When I recall the pastor down in Mandeville the other day that lost his two sons in America, that's a faith-shaking river. Oh, I keep praying for that family day and night. I pray for the man who lose him children in the fire. If you're a Christian and you encounter them things that your faith will shake, don't play a hypocrite. Oh God, but here were the children of Israel. River in two only sun rev. My God, one time. And people are gonna say, how oh, you say you're God pitney? How oh, you say you're a parson? How oh, you say you're a deacon and them the things happen to you? Oh, but take another grip. Hold on and don't let go. Hallelujah. Take another grip. Your feet may be shaken, but take another grip. The people were there. The river was raging. You just imagine the sound, the terrifying sound. When you hear Ochum in Port Maria, it come like a big rolling under the bottom of the river and it just going with everything that it has. Frightening sound. The waters roared in their ears like some of the circumstances that you may be facing this morning. Some of you in church, but some river roaring in your ears. So although me up here talking is the sound of your river you hearing. But I come to tell you this morning, tune out of that and tune into the word of God. Hallelujah. For some of the frightening 
sound of your river. Make one you pick up your Bible and go back home. But tune, change the frequency this morning. Change the frequency and turn to the voice of God. For I hear the songwriter say his voice makes a difference. When he speaks, he releases my troubled mind. It's the only voice I hear that makes a difference. And I'll follow. Follow one day at a time. My brothers and sisters, you have to talk the truth. For sometimes you leave some roaring at your house. And you come at church with it still a roaring at your ears. But God won't tell somebody this morning, allow me to silence your Jordan. Oh, take your burdens to him and make him silence your Jordan this morning. Hallelujah. He promised never to leave nor forsake you. You have to make it up in your mind. I said, Jordan, I see you, you're high. I see you moving, are you deep? I hear the sound, but I shall not die. I shall not die. I shall live to declare. Hallelujah. You have to make it up in your mind and tell Jordan, me not drown. Whatever your raging river may be, I am not going to drown. I may mean, not make you mad, me neither. For some of you, we sit down and get silent, mad. Rev, me not, me think, me, 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 me. Oh Lord, some people sit in church and silently getting crazy. Speak to your Jordan and say, No care, you're roaring in my head, but I am not going to make it. I am not going to mad. I am going over with God. Hallelujah. And if you're just coming to church, you're going to have some raging river. We're going to tell yourself to turn back. Can I tell you? Tell the river for me not turn back. No retreat, full speed ahead with God. Somebody may be within sight of their long awaited dream. Long time you want to serve God, some people, but some Jordan keep arising. Oh, can I tell you this morning? God wants to carry you over this morning. You will not drown. Some Jordans come up unexpectedly. And they seem unsurmountable. They seem uncrossable. Oh, but with God, nothing is unexpected. Nothing with God is unfamiliar. So trust God this morning. Hallelujah. When you expect, because the children of Israel had gotten to a place now where they say, all right. We are going over to a promised land. Like some situations in our lives. When you think it's a highway to our promise, to your deliverance. All of a sudden, there seems to be no way. Oh Lord, but I hear we sing this morning. You made a way. When my back was against the wall. And it looks as if it was over. You God made a way. Hallelujah. It may look like there is no way, but pinch yourself this morning and say, me not nah, turn back. No retreat this morning. Somebody need to remember and reaffirm that God remains God. The way making God. The only God I know that makes a way in wilderness. Talk to me, church, that makes rivers in desert. So somebody need to know that even if you come to Jordan and can't move for a while, you're not stuck permanently. It's only for a while. Can I talk to you? For you think it's China Arbor specialized in a roadway. A God of the way maker. God make bypass when a bypass not supposed to make. It's God is the way maker. And you need to trust God this morning. You're going over. God will create a way. He makes crooked paths straight. What is impossible with man is possible with God. Nothing is too hard for God. No storm is too big, whatever you're going through. No storm too big. No river too wide. No Jordan too deep for our God. Hallelujah. So my brothers and sisters, the people were there with Joshua. But can I also tell you 
that it's not about Joshua, but it's about God. Oh, Joshua has only been used. Can I talk to you people? For you couldn't rely on Joshua, Rev. For Joshua did get old now. By then, he is about 85 years old. Talk to me now. So Joshua, physical strength couldn't carry them over on a Jordan. And furthermore, Joshua didn't specialize in river business. He was a commander. Oh, he, be, he was specialist in army business through God. Tell somebody then when you get to such a place, it must be God. It must be God. It can't be your husband, your wife, or your pitney. It must be God. It can't be the prime minister, not even your pastor. It must be God. Hallelujah. For sometimes God has to make us go down. And when we look around, there is no help. Strip us of help. Strip us of whatever importance so that we can look and know that it's all about God. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, they were at the bank. What a time to cross. For the word of God said it was harvest time. Not during the summer. It was when the waters were not humanly manageable. Instead, it was during the springtime or harvest time when the ice melted in the hills and sent the water straight down to the river. So instead, the water had, say, 40 feet. The river had 40 feet of water. No, because it's springtime. It will have about 60 or 80 feet. Can I talk to us? I'm just trying to give us a picture of what was going on. The flooding capacity of the river had increased. Hallelujah. Can I talk to us this morning? It seemed like the worst possible time for them to cross the river. But can I tell you, my brothers and sisters, that when it seems like it's the worst time in our book, it's the best time in God's book. Hallelujah. Sometimes you think it's the worst time for things to happen to you. It's the best time for God to get the glory. Some more water came down. But when I see more water come down, I know it's more power from God. Oh, can I talk to you? More water, more power. So somebody needs to say, bring on the water. Bring on the raging. Because my God's glory, hallelujah, is going to be revealed. Where is the church this morning? For when we are down to nothing, remember God is up to something. Hallelujah. So the waters had increased. Hallelujah. The waters had increased. The waters were raging. My brothers and sisters, it seems as if there was no way out. But God is not short of ideas. For he remains the all-knowing, omniscient God. And he remains the all-powerful, omnipotent God. Hallelujah. Can I tell you too? That true faith cannot be tested when water lick a bit, when time's sunny. Our true faith is tested when water high rev, when water high. Oh, my brothers and sisters, because you know now that it has to be God. It needs divine intervention. It needs a miracle. Oh, can I tell you about God is still in the miracle working business for some of us in church. I don't know if it's COVID or what. Believe that God finished with miracle. God is, God is still in the miracle working business. I see some people who used to advertise on TV. So they have power. For all kind of some Indian names. I can't even call them. Shidrak Shore or some Wolipa story story. Huh? All, it seems like their business has gotten hit by COVID. But God's miracle business has not been hit by anything. Cannot be hit by anything. God is still in the miracle working business. Hallelujah. And you need to give him praise. Somebody, my brothers and sisters, may be on the bank of your Jordan this morning. Need a miracle. Don't give up. Don't turn back. God remains unchangeable, steadfast, unshakable, unstoppable. Hallelujah. He remains the same. I am. 
who took them out of Egypt. The same I am who took them across the Red Sea, provided manna for them to eat. He remains the I am and he is the I am today. Your river may be raging. You don't reach your promised land yet. But you're still alive even though the river rage. You're still alive. You still can see the, the waters and you still can hear them. So give God thanks and hold on. Hallelujah. For the great I am. It's still I am. Can I take us through quickly? Two quick points as we get to that crossing of our, our raging rivers. Going over with God. Point number one, wait on the Lord. We sing it all morning already. Wait on the Lord. Joshua told the people, take up the ark of the covenant and pass over you before the people. Wait on God. Don't try going over your Jordan without God. Hallelujah. In verse 3, he said, when you see the ark, remove from your place and go after it. Church of God. When you see the ark, remove from your place and go after it. God was telling them to wait on, Joshua was telling them to wait on the presence of God and to move after it. Wait on God. The ark of the covenant, my brothers and sisters, represented the presence of God. But it also represented relationship between God and his people. It represents a token of the spirit and the presence of God for us. Hallelujah. And so some of us need to start running after the presence of God. There's a book I read some time ago named The God Chasers. Some of you need to be God Chasers, chasing after the presence of God. Get up from your place and go after it. That's what Joshua told the people. The children of Israel understood the importance of the presence of God then. For they came to understand that if God's presence was not with them, they did not want to go. They knew that the, pres the presence of God gave them provision, power, and protection. I don't know about you this morning, but I don't want God to take his presence from me. Hallelujah. The ark symbolized for them much. Great symbolism for them. For God's words was written on the stone in the ark. Can I talk to us? And that with the Ten Commandments was the will of God. In the ark was not just the stone tablet, but it was Aaron's rod, a symbol of God's power. And there was a pot of manna, symbol of God's gracious provision. Can I talk to you, church? So God's will was there. God's power was there. God's provision was there. All represented. And in addition to that, on top of the ark was a gold plate called the mercy seat. Lord of mercy. Where two statues of the cherubims knelt down. I don't know about you, but I thank God this morning for the mercy seat. For it's the mercy seat why I am here this morning. The mercy seat where I can stand before you this morning. Somebody need to give God thanks this morning for the mercy seat. No care good, the good you may have been. It's the mercy seat why you are here this morning. Hallelujah. So the Ark of the Covenant was not just a wooden box, but it was representation of God's power, his provision, his presence, and his mercy. Hallelujah. Joshua then told the people, wait on the Lord. Let the Lord lead and you follow. Too often we run ahead of God doing what we think and what we want. Wait on the Lord. In Exodus 33 verse 15, Moses declared, If thy presence go not with us, then carry us not up there. In other words, we're not going without your presence. Hallelujah. I wish some of us would have that mentality. We're not doing anything without God. Hallelujah. I wish our leaders in this country 
would know the, the power and the value of the presence of God. We would not be in so much trouble. I wish those of us who lead different ministries in church would value the presence of God. So things would not be mundane. Those of you who come into church and come to sleep would value the presence of God. Now you're not coming to see Reverend Drummond and the prayer team. You're coming into the presence of Almighty God. When you realize how valuable the presence of God is, then it would be less of self and more of God. Wait on the God. Wait on God. Don't trust in your own sinful self. Although you don't want to admit that you're sinful, we're all born in sin and shaped in iniquity. That is why Joshua told the people early up in the verse, sanctify yourself. Come to talk to me, church. He says, sanctify yourself for tomorrow. The Lord will want to do wonders among you. God wanted the people to get rid of self. And the sins that come with self. self. Self will make you want to do just what you want to do. And not be led by God's spirit. So he says, set yourself ap apart. Be spiritually alert. Be spiritually upright. The challenge then as it is now for us. Examine yourself. Confess your sins and forsake the sins that so easily beset you. Can I talk to your church? Even if you don't invite me back up here. For sometimes as Christians we have become too spiritually modernized. We too spiritually modernized. So we don't sanctify ourselves anymore. And that's why we miss the movement of God. Rev, in times gone by, even when you read in Old Testament, the people did not just wash their physical garments, but they would rid themselves of anything that gratifies self. I guess that's how fasting come about. Oh Lord, you're hungry, but you're not eat. Because I don't want to miss what God is doing. You notice that fasting has, is becoming redundant in many places in, in, in Christendom. Oh, but I thank God. I know you keep your fasting. I mean, I watch your rev. I watch your service many times. But sometimes we have become too modernized. People don't know how to consecrate themselves again. So they come into church any and anyhow. Can I talk to you? Sanctify yourself means you abstain from many things that would gratify your flesh. So if you ask some pastor years ago, Rev, we get modern now. Some of them wouldn't even sleep near their wives before they come to preach. But we get so presumptuous and bare faced and modernized now. Some of we want to step out of the bed of adultery and fornication and come take up the mic and minister to people. Watch yourself. Mind your drowning a Jordan. Sanctify yourself. You come to represent God. Sanctify yourself. Joshua said, Sanctify yourself. Be deliberate to interrupt some of your normal functions. Hallelujah. In order to be spiritually alert. Be deliberate. Be deliberate. For, you know, some we watch all such things on TV till 1 a.m. in the morning and then we are come, come minister you have to be deliberate be deliberate to interrupt some of your normal functions oh so that you can be spiritually alert you can be in tune with God can I talk to us that's what God is saying put on hold some self-gratification 
put on all some routines. You can catch up with some of them so long as they're not ungodly. You can catch up with them at another time. Like, oh, you know, eat from morning. When you go home, you can go eat. But you put, put yourself on fasting so that you can come to be in the presence of God. Be alert to what God is saying and what God is doing. But we have become so modernized. Anyway, my brothers and sisters, the message still is sanctify yourself. For sometimes you don't cross your Jordan because you have not sanctified yourself. So you don't know when God is moving. When God say go pitch a tent, you have to be alert to pitch a tent. And when God say move, you have to be alert to move. Sanctify yourself. Wait on the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know, my brothers and sisters. We just seem to be following ourselves nowadays. I remember the days when my old grandmother used to go upon fasting. I grew up for part of my life in Zion Hill Baptist Church. Because my grandmother did live a rich man. And them old pastor sharp and all them pastor there. Well, if pastor poor me one got through, you know, Stokes and Sharp and Jared. Me got through Wally because there was another time she moved to Port Maria. So me gone to Port Maria Baptist and on holiday time, me da rock a best. Cause me go back home to mommy, so three circuit, me one grew up in a, in a little time. But they used to have whole night fasting up as Daniel Baptist. Whole night fasting. Oh God, fasting and praying. Lord, you think them going out on the road without fasting and praying? And I could wake up and hear my granny singing, follow, follow. I will follow Jesus anywhere, everywhere. I will follow on. Hallelujah. Sanctify yourself. That's what God expects. We could have done a million things in church. Our church, I get empty too. But the people of God need to get back to basics. Sanctify ourselves and go back out. We could have sing, we could have preached till we know no voice. Until we sanctify ourselves, God, people will not come to know Jesus. Sanctify yourself. Every individual in this church. Sanctify yourself, Deacon Pauline Phillips. Sanctify yourself, child of God. If you are going to stand up to represent God, sanctify yourself. Many people in Anatabe need to come to know Jesus. Sanctify. Sanctify yourself. Hallelujah. As you wait on the Lord. Sanctify yourself, my brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. I don't know what Jordan you need to cross. I know even at our church, we have the Jordan to rebuild our church. After COVID, God is calling on us to sanctify ourselves again. We're going to zone crusade. Sanctify yourself so that when the bus, when you get your bus, you can really go out and ask to and save. Would you come with us on the trip to down to Manig? But if you're not sanctify yourself, then I uh, come. Sanctify it's an individual responsibility. It's not just pastor alone. Where you live, sanctify yourself. Where you work. So that you can get even 10 unsaved upon the bus. Carry them go on money. Let them hear gospel. And according to the work of God's Holy Spirit, they will get saved and come back and be 10 new members in your church. But we have to sanctify ourselves. It's a call to the deacon's board at Grace Baptist, as it is a call to the deacon's board at Anata Bay Baptist, a call to leaders, a call to young people. For some time, young people think of only old people to sanctify themselves. Sanctify yourself. Hallelujah. But Jordan was raging. 
Hallelujah. I don't know the intensity of the raging waters as you wait on God this morning. But I can tell you that God is the only one I know can mess up disasters. We don't know about it already, how much time hurricane coming. Oh, direct hit. But God mess up that and shift it away. God alone can mess up disasters. Hallelujah. He speaks to winds and waves for he created them. So him can talk to them. No one else can talk to wind and wave. God no, they make it. God make them. Hallelujah. Wait then, can I say, wait on the Lord. Wait on the way maker. Follow after him. He is Jehovah Nisi. He is the banner that goes before us. He is a reliable guide. He is the world's greatest navigator. He is the greatest shepherd. The omnipotent God. God know everything that you'll encounter. Even what you are going through now. He knows every plot, every secret trap. He knows the depth of Jordan. He knows the height of the waves. God knows. So whatever you're going through, no believes that God no know. Like the, the, the disciples in the boat when Jesus was sleeping. He named asleep to death. He knows. It's God invite them in the boat. So God know what they were going to encounter. Wait on God. For it is safer to go with God. Not knowing where you're going. Like Abraham. Him just follow after God. Not knowing. It is safer to follow after God. Not knowing where you're going. Than to go without God. Thinking you know where you're going. Oh, that is dangerous treading. For sometimes we think we know we're going. Are we going without God? One secular man sing one song. Say, if you do that, you're living dangerously. You're living dangerously. I think it's Barrington Levy did sing that song. Then. Me didn't know about song. Me never born save. Oh, him say you're living dangerously. But if you wait on God, I hear Isaiah saying, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. We sung it this morning already. Wait then on the Lord. Hallelujah. Wait on God. Hallelujah. But as I try to wrap up, can I go to the second point? After you wait on the Lord, there comes a time to step out in faith. Verse 13 puts the icing on the cake. And it shall come to pass that as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord, of the, of the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of Jordan, that the waters shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand in a heap. Hallelujah. The people waited on God. And then the leaders stepped out in faith and God heap up the water. Oh, you don't get the message. God heap up the raging water. I don't know about you, but I want God heap up some raging waters for me. I just saying heap it up for me, God. I'm not even seeing some of them, but they're coming up and I'm not seeing. Heap them up for me, God. Hallelujah. The, 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 the leaders stepped out. And God stopped the water. The word of God declares. He has given us authority. Hallelujah. So sometime you need to speak. Speak to your raging waters. I say heap up. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Stand on the word of God. The waters seized. They heaped up. My brothers and sisters. Because the priests obeyed. And they stepped out in faith. Don't keep the power of God locked up in your Bible. Don't keep the power of God. You go home, you lock it up. You lock it up in your Bible and say, there's power in God's word. There's power in you. There's power. Power. God has invested his power in us. So get up. Stand up. And step in your Jordan. In faith. And declare that you are going over in Jesus' name. Put your faith to action. For we are more than conquerors. And step out in your Jordan. Step out in faith not to drown. But to go over. I don't know what Jordan is for you this morning. 
Maybe it is that you need to get over to the side of salvation. Some rivers may be raging in your lives. You have some obstacles, some ignorances. Hallelujah. That may be there before you, but God is inviting you this morning to wait upon him and then to step out in faith. You may be fearful that you won't make it. Many people, many non-Christians are saying, I don't want to come because I don't want to come and fail. Oh, my brothers and sisters, the same God who keeps us will keep you. For he's a God who not only saves, but he keeps and he satisfies. Hallelujah. You will fall down, but God will pick you up back if you trust him. And can I tell you this morning, step out in faith. Hebrews eleven sixteen 16 reminds us without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Jordan may be representing some demons in your life. Jordan may be representing some sickness, some disease, some bad diagnosis. Jordan may be representing some disaster, whether it be natural or relational. Jordan may be representing death, but God is able to deliver from them all. Hallelujah. He is able to deliver you no matter if his demon, his disease, his sickness, death, disaster. Our God is comprehensive this morning. Hallelujah. He is able to deliver you. Jordan calls for decision, my brothers and sisters. For you will have to decide whether you are going to cross or not cross. Jordan calls for decision, for you will have to decide whether you are going to retreat or not retreat. Surrender or not surrender. Jordan is a place of transition, as bad as Jordan may look, for it's taking you past a raging water into God's promise. Jordan is a place of transition, for you have to move from one place to get to the other, regardless of the obstacle. Can I tell you this morning, the God who controls the Jordan offers himself to you today. Whatever it is you are going through, whether it is to make a decision for Christ or it is some personal issue, the God who controls the Jordan offers himself to you this morning. Whatever stage you are in on your journey, you may be unsaved. You may be a backslider. You may be a wounded soldier. You may be half committed. You may be struggling. Yes, the waters are raging. But God offers himself to you this morning. He says you don't have to cross Jordan alone. Will you wait on him this morning? Will you step out in faith this morning, knowing the God of Joshua, the God of the children of Israel, is still God today, and nothing is too hard for him. Amen. Hallelujah. Stand with me, please. We're going to try to sing that little song, Follow, Follow. I will follow Jesus. You need to follow him to make a decision to serve him as your Lord and Savior this morning. I invite you to come to the altar. You may be struggling. I invite you to come this morning, follow, wait on God for your deliverance. Whatever it is you're going through this morning, the altar is open. Do not leave this place not following God this morning. Hallelujah. You know the song? Okay, the chorus, the chorus will do, my sister. Follow, follow, I will follow Jesus. Who will follow him this morning? Everywhere, everywhere. Who will be the first this morning to say, God, I am going through some struggles, but I want to follow you. I want 
you to carry me over my Jordan. You may be here and you're not a Christian. Will you commit yourself to him this morning? take a step from where you are in your spiritual journey saying God I want to follow after you I want to go to higher heights and so I set myself up this morning for you to sanctify me this morning consecrate me for greater service whatever it is you may be struggling with some sickness Will you follow after him this morning? Go ahead, my sister. Hallelujah. God bless you as you come. Is there someone else who needs to come this morning? Saying, I will follow Jesus. Go on, my sister. Follow, follow. I will follow Jesus. for those who have come to the altar. The call was made. I pray God would have spoken to the hearts of his people. It's God's presence and God's spirit that will do the work this morning. You just need to lift your faith this morning to God and allow him to take you over your raging waters this morning. It doesn't matter. Sometimes some people might not see what you're going through. For your waters may be some undercurrent. But God, God, God knows what's going underneath as he knows what's going on top. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we pray this morning for strength. For those who have come, hallelujah. We pray for those in virtual space this morning who may be at their point of decision. No retreat, no surrender. You are going over this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sovereign God and our Father, we exalt you this morning in worship. We lift you up as the great I am. Hallelujah. God of Joshua. God who caused Jordan to heap up. You are the God we approach this morning. You are the God we serve. You are, you are the God we believe in this morning. You are the God we take our raging waters to this morning. Lord, you are the God we take even our indecision to this morning. We thank you for your mercies that they are brand new every morning. And this 11th day of September, brand new mercies for your people. Hallelujah. Last week, mercies are not sufficient. Thank you, God, for today's mercies. Your people are at the altar, God. Your people have come to you, to you, God, the I am that you are. Your people have come to you, the provider, the protector, the deliverer, the way maker, the miracle worker, promise keeper. Your people have come to you, the problem solver. Your people are before you this morning. The God who saves. Your people are before you this morning. The God who forgives. Your people are before you, God. 
Your people are before you, even those in virtual space. Your people are before you, God. Thank you that you are omniscient. And you are omnipresent. Hallelujah. So God, we pray you will meet your people this morning at the point of their need. In the name of Jesus Christ, we speak to raging waters. We say, peace be still. In the name of Jesus, whatever the waters that your people may be experiencing in their personal life, in their spiritual life, we say, heap up. Heap up. Heap back up. Back up, back up in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus, Jesus, reach down your hands this morning and take your people over there, Jordan. Lord, there may be a sick child. I don't know, Lord, from whence this came, but there may be a sick child. Jesus. Son of David, have mercy this morning. Bob and Gilead, reach down your nails, card hands this morning. And touch, touch, and heal this morning, we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ. And we give you the glory, God, for victory belongs to you. Lord, whatever other sickness may be represented in this chapel. Oh God, let your presence overtake this place. Oh God, let your presence saturate. Let your presence go from bench to bench and touch every person, God, at the point of their need this morning. Some are sick physically. But some are sick emotionally. Oh, some are sick with sin. Some are sick, oh God, psychologically. We speak healing this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We speak healing. In the name of Jesus Christ. We call dry bones to live again this morning. Dry bones. Dry bones. We call you out of the valley this morning. Dry bones. Live again to the glory of God. Live again to the glory of God. Hallelujah. We pray, mighty God, for this community. Those who hear your word, God. This chapel, God, have been strategically placed in the center of this town. So many cannot say they have not heard your words. We pray, God, that you will continue to knock on their doors, their hard doors this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, mighty God, continue to use this pulpit to proclaim your word. We pray for this community. Let them know, oh God, your people, how much you love them. Lord God, Lord, it's not about politics, whether green or orange. It's about you, God. Hallelujah. Mighty God, we pray that you'll reach on your hands. Rescue the perishing. Care for the dying. Snatch them in pity from death and the grave. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh God. Lord, let another bay not be the same. Because God, your people would have sanctified themselves. And your word is preached in sincerity. Mighty God, clean up every member of this church.
Clean up your church everywhere. Clean us up. That we can be light in the darkness we pray. For God you are coming back to ask us. What have you done to my people? We have to stand before you. Oh God to give an account. Mighty God. We commit Jamaica to you. Our land. Your land that you created. We commit our leaders. We commit those God who are mourning the loss of their loved ones. We pray for comfort this morning. Oh mighty God. We pray for comfort this morning. Be not dismayed said the Lord. Lord you promise that you will uphold us. With your right hand of righteousness. Mighty God. Remember those who are sick. In this country. We commit another bay hospital to you. Go through God. Word from word to word this morning. Oh miracle working God. Healing God. Go through this morning. And touch and heal we pray. Go through the cells, the prison. We commit another bay lock up to you this morning. We commit the police officers down there to you this morning. Mighty God! We call out some prisoners this morning to salvation. We call them out. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Give the wind a mighty voice this morning. Jesus loves you. Hallelujah. Mighty God. Have your own way, God. We commit this church, your pastor, to you. Every member of this church, every visitor those who have been coming with thank you for the gentleman who has been here three weeks we lift him up to you this morning whatever circumstance that he may be going through we pray that it will back up this morning through the power of your Holy Spirit we speak deliverance we speak favor over his life we speak salvation in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you for victory this morning, Lord. And whatever else we would have failed to ask because of our limited knowledge, mighty God who is omniscient, fail not to grant this morning. Remember every home represented here. Hallelujah. Hear our prayer. We tell you thanks. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Just give God a wave offering this morning as you tell him thanks. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If you need to speak to a counselor, counselor will be available to talk to you this morning. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, church. I don't know about you, but today I'm indeed blessed. And Deacon Phillips, the United Bay Baptist Church, thank you. Thanks you for coming to be our speaker for today and to intercede on our behalf. What a word. And as, as she spoke, I just want to say, because this came to me, be of good courage. God spoke unto Joshua, went over the river. God pointed the way this morning. And there's a song that says, God 
any river you think uncrossable, any mountains you cannot tunnel through. God specializes in things impossible. Move forward, pitch your tents on the bank of the river, stay on your bank. What is it that is roaring in your ears? What is your Jordan? Wait on God. Don't go over without him. Sanctify ourselves as we wait on the Lord. Your crossing will come. Please stand for the benediction. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen you. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen, strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all of God's children. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And now may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest, remain, and abide with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. Just reminding us that we have a Sunday school immediately after church, and there's a class for everyone. And we are asking persons not to go for refreshment before the Sunday school. Have a good week, everyone, and God bless you all. Oh, uh -huh.